What is going on guys and welcome back to the film room got another mock draft coming your way with the draft less than two weeks away you know we're gonna be mocking it up and really excited to do this one gonna be maybe doing some trades on this one hadn't done that in my first two so definitely open to the idea if it presents itself in this draft before we get into it wanted to thank you guys so much for hitting that 2000 subscriber mark when I started this channel earlier this season did not think that it would be possible going into next season that I would even have a thousand subscribers so to be a double that with the season still a few months away seriously cannot thank you guys enough well enough of that we know why you clicked on this video let's get this mock draft going Getting into this four-round mock, let's go ahead and see who will fall to us at that number 10 spot. And looking at the board, very against drafting Micah Parsons at 10. Obviously don't need a quarterback. Rashawn Slater. Rashawn Slater, I will say I would not be opposed to drafting him at the 10th spot. Definitely concerns me a little seeing as tackle, left tackle or right tackle, is his strong suit. We know he can play either of those spots as well as really anywhere across the line as uh, from what we're hearing. But with the restructuring of Tyron Smith and Lyle Collins' contracts, we kind of been kicking that can down the road, so it seems like those are going to be our starting tackles for at least the next two to three years. So if we did bring him in, he would likely be put at that left guard spot, which wouldn't be a bad thing, but... Uh, for the sake of this draft, we're going to go ahead and pass on him. Nothing really here. J.C. Horn, of course, do love J.C. Horn. Would be fine with him at the 10th spot, too. Definitely prefer Sertain as an immediate fit. I think Horn possibly is a higher ceiling, but I think Sertain would have a better rookie season. Uh, you know what? I said it earlier. Let's go ahead and make ourselves a trade in this mock draft. Definitely don't want to move too far down. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of a team that could still use a quarterback because Trey Lance is right there. So a team like the Bears maybe, they're the 20th pick, right? If I can find them, a team like the Bears could definitely potentially trade up and grab a guy like Trey Lance. We know they're still in need of a quarterback. I mean, Andy Dalton, as of now, is their QB1. So let's see if they like this. You know, we're just going to force it to go through. They like it, <laughs> all right? We'll take their first and their second, and they're moving 10 spots up. They can deal with that compensatory pick. Going to go ahead and resume it. Oh, Mac Jones is there as well. They end up taking him. Uh-oh, Eagles got Trey Lance. They might have a quarterback now. And who are we going to grab at the 20th spot? All right, two guys that I like at this spot. First, Greg Newsom. I think one of the most slept-on corners in this draft. I think he has the potential to be up there with that of Farley, Horn, and Sertain. May not have the size that we would see with those guys, but Newsom still would be very, very well fit in this Dan Quinn 4-3 under cover 3 scheme. Dropping him off into a third of the field would be ideal for this guy. We know he can get back there and break up passes. Had 10 in the shortened season with Northwestern, as well as one interception. So he's a guy that likes to get his head around and his hands on the football, which we, of course, would love to see, as we're finally seeing that out of Trayvon Diggs, but haven't seen that for quite some time out of really any Cowboys corners. Also, Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa, the winner of the Buckus Award last year in college football, linebacker of the year, a guy that is quick and hard hitting does miss some tackles at times because he was trying to lay the wood but a guy that's going to be filling run gaps dropping a Jalen Smith video on Tuesday and that's a problem that I will talk about in that video is Jalen does not hit the run gaps and many of our linebackers really don't like we need to be seen and that will not be a problem with joke he is just a guy that is going to fly into the hole and let you know of his presence. Also a guy that has great lateral quickness and would be great in this 4 3 under scheme. You're going to need a linebacker that's fast, agile, quick, and can move around in the middle of the field and towards the flats to be in coverage. And I think he can do just that. So if he does fall to this 20th spot, while I do like Greg Newsom, I think there is corner talent down in day two of the draft that we could grab. But I don't think there's a talent like Joke that we could grab there. So I'm going to go ahead and take him at this 20th spot. And I would be thrilled if we could get him at that 20 pick. Let's go ahead and see how the draft falls the rest of the way up until the first pick that we have in this second round. Now we have two picks as well because of that trade with 
the Chicago Bears. So let's see what we got cooking in the second round. At first glance, definitely disappointed that Richie Grant got snagged by our rival Giants a couple picks before. He would have been my definite pick at this 44th spot. However, still some talented secondary talent in this part of the draft available. Looking at Elijah Molden, you can knock him for his size, but he's a guy that definitely has the potential and the ranginess to be put up at that one high spot in Excel, and also has the versatility to come down and cover the slot. Looking at Jamar Johnson, kind of similar in that, but a taller guy, and a guy that I think has probably better ball skills. Picked off Justin Fields twice, if that means anything to you. A guy that's going to get after the football, get up in the air, and has the ability to not only be put in that one high safety spot, but he also had some starting time at the corner spot as well, so you can bring him down. Looking at Aleem McNeil, too. Defensive interior, could we take him at this 44th spot? Is he going to be available at the 52nd spot? Not too sure there. Our Darius Washington, another guy that has the ranginess, but maybe a little small. Uh, height at the free safety spot isn't a huge deal to me. As long as they're taking the right angles, their height shouldn't be too much of a deal as long as they don't get beat. Uh, Kelvin Joseph, another guy. Not going to pick him here. May consider him at the 52nd spot, especially since we didn't go corner in the first round. I think is a huge, huge day two sleeper. That should definitely be on a lot of people's radars that could excel in this Dan Quinn scheme playing a cover three look a majority of the time. However, for this spot at the 44th pick, I'm going to be going with Jamar Johnson, especially because we didn't go corner in the first round. He's a guy that say maybe KZ does get that starting role at the free safety spot. Maybe we can try working in Jamar Johnson at corner, see how that works out. He's played there before. We know he has the ball skills, so if we just get him back into a deep third and let him work for there, it could definitely work out. And yeah, let's go ahead and take him. He's a guy that I think will get after the football often, and that's something that we have been missing in this defense. All right, now looking at the 52nd pick, our second pick in the second round. Definitely going to be between two guys for me. It's going to be that of Ali McNeil. Defensive interior could come in and be a really solid one tech for us, something that we've been missing dearly, a guy to just basically cause a traffic jam up the middle get in, stop running backs at the line of scrimmage. He's not going to be a guy that's going to be getting after the passer often. You're going to be bringing him on early run downs and uh, tell him to basically just go ahead and stuff the middle up. And I think he could do really well at that. But like I said, because we do need to take a corner, I think at least in the first two rounds of this draft, I'm going to have to go with my guy, Kelvin Joseph. I think Kelvin Joseph is a huge sleeper and one of the more underrated prospects in this draft. He has great ball skills, will break an attack on the football, and would be a great fit in this cover three scheme with his size as well. Get him back there and do a deep third, and like I said earlier, let that guy work. Let that guy that has the size and the ball skills get after the football. So, Going to be going with Kelvin Joseph at this 52nd spot. Would be really excited if our second round worked out similar to this. Of course, would like Richie Grant over that of Jamar Johnson, but he will definitely do for now. Let's see how we're looking going into the third round. With our first pick in the third round, let's see what we got going here. Definitely want to fill out this defensive line. So whether what that's with an edge guy or an interior defensive line, let's see what we got going here. Bobby Brown, Ooh, Milton Williams, and Rashad Weaver. I think we can get Weaver later on. Actually, I don't love him coming off the edge in a 4-3, but I think he is a solid guy. 6-4, big frame, just maybe lacks that elite edge quickness that you would be looking for in a guy to stick out there. Um, I do like Milton Williams a lot. Milton Williams stands out to me. He could be a 3-tech or 1-tech for us, and I know we want to get a guy that can come in, be that run stuffer at the 1-tech spot, but Williams does have the capability to do that. He is great against the run. And even if he doesn't work out at the one-tech spot, he, I think he would be really solid in the three-tech spot in this scheme and could be a guy that could definitely get in the backfield quick. 
on rundowns. I don't think he's going to be an elite pass rusher by any means, but on rundowns, I think Milton Williams is definitely a guy that could come in for us at the one-tech or three-tech spot. Would likely be a project guy, but when you're picking at 75 on the interior defensive, uh, you're probably going to be looking at a project guy. So we're going to go ahead and take Milton Williams here. Would not be upset with this pick at all if he was there and we decided to go with him then. Uh, I think we need to fill out that interior defensive line more than we do that edge. And um, let's see what we can get at this 99th pick. See if we can get a guy coming off the edge for us. Or, you know, maybe fill out some other positions as well. We could always fill out tackle. Maybe draft Jay. I like Jalen Darden a lot out of North Texas. Definitely a sleeper at the receiver position. Could be that fourth receiver for us. Can never ever have too many weapons or you know i mean maybe we could grab another corner here i know we already got kelvin joseph but we did get him with our second pick in the second round it's not like he's 100 percent. i think kelvin joseph is great don't get me wrong but he's it's not like you're drafting a guy like certain or horn or farley or even that of Newsom, uh, a day one guy that you expect to come in and be an instant starter. Kelvin Joseph might have to work into that role. So I think getting another corner here might not be a bad idea. And when I'm drafting corners in later rounds, I typically want to go with scheme fit. And um, just looking at, I think, I'm thinking Tagown is going to be the best fit for that. Tall guy, great with contested balls, can get up and get after the football down the field. Going to be a guy that you would want to stick in a cover three, not a guy that you want to put man-to-man -man and go against elite speed, but a guy that you could definitely have drop back and do a deep third, and he would be able to do fine for there. And then, of course, you can develop those other traits that you need as a corner in the NFL in order to spick, stick excuse me, with these elite athletic receivers. Uh, so Tay Gowan, definitely going to need to put some size on him, but he does have the height at least to start out. Going to go ahead and take him there at that 99th spot. And working into the fourth round, let's go ahead and see what we can get going at this 115th pick. And you know what? Uh, still a good amount of talent. We just drafted a corner. I like St. Juice, but... I do like Robert Hainsey a lot. Uh, I think, I mean, Notre Dame guy, you can never go wrong with a Notre Dame offensive lineman. And, uh, I mean, we could always use some help at strengthening that tackle depth. So he would not be a bad guy to take here. But I just want to keep filling out this defense, man. I think our offense is going to be fine regardless. I think we can bring in or trade for another tackle or something just to fill out that depth. Maybe go later rounds for a tackle. I just want to keep filling out this defense as best as I can. And you know what? I might reach here. I might do a little bit of a reach. Kyrus Tonga. Big boy. That's what we need up in the middle is a big boy. This guy's like 320, 330, something like that. And can get the job done in terms of run stuffing. Has traits of explosiveness. Not going to be a guy, obviously, you're bringing in on passing downs to get after the passer, of course. But he's definitely a guy you can bring in on early rundowns. Go ahead, stuff the middle, get the job done there, and that's something that we definitely need, at least more consistently. The only size we really have there in terms of the one-tech spot is that of Antoine Woods. Not sure if Eli Anku is coming back, but obviously he's not a long-term guy, and I don't think Woods really is either. We're just kind of keeping him on with that tender. Um, so, yeah, I think Tonga... Maybe, maybe a little bit of a reach here, but I really want to fill out that defense and that defensive interior, especially haven't drafted there yet. So if we can get a big boy with some explosiveness, maybe work on that technique and uh, he can be a good one tech for us. <laughs> Definitely not going to be a day one starter. I don't think that technique is probably going to have a long ways to come. But up until then, he can be a solid guy just to fill some space in the middle, have the occasional solid play in terms of stopping the run. Oh, and that is going to be it. Completely forgot that we traded that 138th overall pick to the Bears. So that is going to wrap up this mock draft. Got that speedy linebacker that is going to fill those holes that we've been missing. Definitely be sure to check out that Jalen Smith video on Tuesday. I'm going to talk about a lot of issues with this linebacking core, kind of what we've been missing that a guy like Joke could bring. Got our rangy free safety. I don't think KZ is going to be 
the answer for the future. Definitely a guy that can come in and do solid. Has the familiarity with Dan Quinn, can be that free safety to start out for us. But I think Jamar Johnson could eventually take over that role. And if not, we can also work him in all over the field. And of course, Kelvin Joseph at the corner spot, a guy that I think a lot of people are sleeping on in this draft, can come in and possibly be a day one starter. We'll have to see how his camp goes. Filling out the defensive interior can never do enough of that. Milton Williams can be a three-tech guy or a one-tech guy. Really just depends on how he excels, preferably, of course, one-tech, because that has been a need of ours for years. Tay Gowan, another guy that you can come in, insert into this cover three scheme, can go up, contest those 50-50 balls, but definitely going to be a project corner. Not a guy I think will be a day-one starter, as well as that of Kairis Tonga. Just a big boy that can fill up the middle and hopefully develop into a solid one-tech PFF seems to like these rankings, gave us an A- minus on this draft, but definitely want to hear what you guys think of this draft. Go ahead and comment below. Let me know what you would have done in terms of these picks, whether it be not doing that trade, going with Rashawn Slater at 10, or going with possibly Greg Newsom at that 20 spot after we traded. Which safety would you have gotten here? Corners here, defensive interior along the board. Did a lot of secondary and defensive interior work, so definitely let me know what you guys think of all of that. Once again, appreciate you guys for stopping by, and I will see you on the next video.